plaisir d'introduire Barry Husk de Blue Leaf. Euh, Barry euh, avait initialement décommandé sa présence. Il est un peu malade. C'est un gars très dynamique qui parle fort et peut-être qu'aujourd'hui, on a une version adoucie de Barry. <rire> C'est mieux comme ça. <rire> et donc, il va quand même nous glisser quelques mots, mais ce n'est pas la, toute la, la belle présentation, tout élaborée que ça aurait pu être. Mais euh, je te laisse. Euh... Oui, merci quand même, Sébastien. Alors, bonjour, mon nom c'est Barry Huss, comme Sébastien a mentionné. Uh, well, we asked me to present in English, so I'll, I'll try and stick to English. Uh, I'm president of Blue Leaf. Blue Leaf is a company I founded in 2007, it's 11 years ago. It's, uh, Blue Leaf is a private uh, social purpose company, which means that all of our profits or any revenues that we make are reinvested in environmental research. Uh, our research programs target uh, problems related to water, um, uh, water aquatic milieu, uh, primarily lakes and rivers. And the problems that we look at are mostly related to eutrophication, cyanobacteria, uh, cyanotoxins, and uh, nutrients that are the cause of those problems. Uh, what um, I wanted to talk to you about specifically today, it's always, uh, I find it's always winner to start a presentation by making excuse, excuses. So uh, I have to apologize because until seven o'clock this morning, I didn't think I was going to be here. So I don't, I don't have a presentation on PowerPoint to show you. I've been in bed for seven days. Uh, so you'll have to put up with my vocal presentations. <clears throat> uh, Blue Leaf has been conducting a uh, integrated watershed research project in a small watershed in southern Quebec for the last 10 years. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with the area, it's a uh, watershed of uh, Petit Lac Saint-Francois, which is slightly north of the city of Sherbrooke. It's a small, uh, primarily agricultural watershed. And as I say, we've been working there for uh, 10 years now. It'll be 11 this summer. And our work consists, first of all, of monitoring. We monitor both the lake, the tributaries, and uh, some of the farms. And we're looking at nutrients, all of the nutrient fractions, uh, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus. and. Uh, In the lake, we're looking at um, uh, taxonomy, uh, cyanobacteria, cyanotoxins, and uh, zooplankton, some other aspects as well. So while we're doing monitoring, on, alongside of that, we've been implementing um, new methods in farming, in agriculture, to try and prevent the growth of cyanobacteria and uh, eutrophication in general. Uh, you saw the presentation that started with Sebastien this morning where he looked at uh, the primary causes of eutrophication and cyanobacteria in Lake Erie. We know that agriculture is our main source of nutrients. It's not just Lake Erie, it's uh, most of southern Quebec is the problem, the main problem as well. So our work has been in, uh, in farming to look at uh, the sources, the non-point source of nutrients That's the big problem in dealing with agriculture is you don't have, uh, as in industri industry or in cities, the uh, pollution is coming out of a pipe or out of uh, one, one specific targeted area. It's non-point, so we have to find ways to, to deal with that. So the methods that we have been developing and publishing in the last three or four years uh, are related to non-point source. Um, we have uh, approximately 500 consecutive weeks of uh, sampling, both in the lakes and tributaries. Uh, Sonia mentioned uh, winter sampling is one of our strengths. We do have a meter of ice in our lake. We do sample every week, uh, 52 weeks a year. And at the same time, we're doing taxonomic sampling and nutrient sampling. So we have a significant database Uh, that we are now able to turn over to researchers in a trap and that they can use uh, both for the past 10 years and for the three or four coming years uh, in helping to better understand uh, some of the nutrient influences on cyanobacteria and hopefully what we can do to prevent it. And uh, at the same time, we hope to present some new methods that we feel are applicable to Uh, reducing those problems. 
So in a wide picture, that's what uh, Blue Leaf does in the ATRAP program. And it's uh, been a pleasure to participate with you so far. And we hope uh, we look for success in the coming years as well. So um, I'm sorry for the brief uh, overview, but if you have any questions, please feel free. Thank you. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned sample. <clears throat> Sorry, samples. Can you describe the samples? The water samples, filtrates, the sediments. Can you? Yes. All of that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> every no. Uh, every week we have uh, surface water samples from the lake, and from the main tributaries, as well as from our installations on farms. So, 52 weeks a year, uh, we have to go on the farms, snowmobiles, dig, take samples, and by the way. Something interesting to note is that field drains in agriculture are significant in the winter and they run all winter and nitrogen rates are uh, specifically very high in the winter. So we feel strongly that winter sampling is, uh, is an important aspect. But in addition to the weekly sampling, we do other sampling, especially uh, in the summer for taxonomy in uh, lake samples of phytoplankton and uh, zooplankton. We also do sediment sampling on a monthly basis. Um, can, I, can I ask, when you say taxonomy, <clears throat> how, how do, you, do you, is it genomics? Is it no, sequencing? No, is it's it, uh, a microscopic right, analysis, right. yeah. Okay. But with uh, a trap, uh, now it's included in the genomics as well are being done at the same time. So, so we right. have, with the same sample, we have the whole different series of uh, okay. analyses. Thanks. You were talking about the <coughs> catching what's coming from the farm. Does that mean that you have uh, some way to intercept the drainage and the runoff at the surface? Do you have uh, both of those uh, data? Yes, we 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 have. Uh, we're working. Over the 10 years, we've started with perhaps between 20 and 25 different methods, which we've now narrowed down over the years to about a, uh, a number of five or six specific methods that we've perfected. And those uh, uh, address both the uh, surface flow as well as the drainage flow, and both for nitrogen as well as for phosphorus. Uh, 